I was injured. I had surgery in January of 2017. And then I was on, I was like on crutches. I was in a wheelchair. Like I couldn't walk the whole thing. Um, I was non, I was non weight bearing for 16 weeks. So I couldn't put any foot for 16 weeks was a long time and then i started playing again in like may like i could actually like stand up on the court and hit and then my first tournament back was wimbledon so i played wimbledon i lost first round to ali risk um i played a good match but like it was tough like i hadn't played in a really long time i hadn't played since the olympics of the prior year so since 2016 were you on a protected I was unprotected, yeah. Right. So when I came back, my protected, I think, was like 30-something, maybe like 38 or something right. like that. So I could get into all the tournaments with my protected. And then I played Wimbledon. Then I came back and I played in D.C. I played Halep first round in D.C. And I played a good match, but obviously really tough. Like, she was probably like top five in the world at the time. Not Maybe not number one yet, but she was still up there. And then I went to Toronto I made finals of doubles in D.C. with Jeannie Bouchard. When we played, it was like a good week. We played well. Um, and then I went to Toronto. I made semis in Toronto. I lost to Wozniacki in the semis, but it was fine. I was tired as hell. Um, and then went to Cincinnati, lost in the semis to Halep there. And I played well. Like I, play, I was like cruising. I was doing well, beating all the people I should beat, you know, whatever. And everyone, I think, kind of was like, where'd she come from? Because I hadn't played all year, basically. Um, and then going into the U S open, we were like pulling out probably like the second day of practice we had gotten there and Mary Carrillo and Paul Anacone were working for tennis channel and they were like coming out of the, whatever, like the little like thing, like the, what do they call it? Like the broadcasters, Broadcast. like, yeah. like the thing they had over yeah. there. Yeah. And they came to the car and we're talking and everybody loves to talk to my mom. So of course they were like chatting it up. And then Paul and Mary like, you know, you could win tournaments loan. And I was like, okay. I was like, yeah, I said, if I play well, I'll have a good result. I'll, I'll try to do something good. Right. And, um, I was just like, yeah, whatever. So we kind of like went about our day and whatever in our, our next two weeks. And, and then I was in the semis and, I remember me and my mom and my friend Tanya were sitting in the room, in my hotel room. We had just come back from dinner and there was like a little, you know, ESPN does like little tickers or whatever. And it says like, it was like just saying, it's like Sloan Stevens defeated Venus Williams. And it said like the prize money next to it. And I was like, holy shit, I'm rich. <laughs> I was like, mom, I am rich, girl. And she was like, oh no, my we God. Rich. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that's how much money you make? Oh my goodness. And I was like, wow. Um, but it didn't say how much you made for the final. So like I had, then I was in the final. So I had like beaten Venus and then I was in the final. And I was like, oh my God. But it didn't say how much money like the rest was. It just said how much you like got to that mm. point. And I was like, I better win the tournament then. I was like, mom, we got to win the tournament. <laughs> and so from then I was like, oh, like I couldn't, not that I couldn't believe that I'd gotten that far. I'd played so many hard matches. I'd say like first round I played like Benchy, who had made the finals the year before. Then I played Sybil Kova, who won the tournament the week before in New Haven. I played Gerges, who was like top 20 at the time. I played Ash Barty, who was like just coming back, but she was, obviously playing well um and then who else i played well, i'm I played sure the matches before led up to it was good like you said you lost to Halep yeah. twice that summer and she was on her way to the top like yeah, you said like you beat five. the people that you thought that you should have beaten yeah so. like i didn't lose to anyone that i was like oh that was a bad loss like i don't even that whole entire summer like i didn't yeah. i was like okay this is so even fine. leading up you probably felt like you were in a good place like. yeah i was in a really good place and i just didn't i mean i had nothing to lose i hadn't played all year had made no money all year. I was like on disability. I was like just like chilling. So I was like, <laughs> might as well make some money. Um, but yeah, there was no absolutely no pressure for me to perform at that point. Um, and there was no expectations. Everyone was just happy that I was back and I was playing and I was healthy. Um, obviously, having surgery in the first week of January, like at the beginning of a new season, not ideal. Yeah. So just being able to play, everyone was happy with. And obviously, having good results, totally unexpected because had played and then um being able to beat like good players who were actually at the time like playing well like at the top of the game I was like okay this is not you feel like at that time it was very competitive like the top players yeah for sure like I in Toronto I played Safarova who was I think at the time she was also top 20 
and she had two match points and I came back and won. Like, I think like those like little things like were what like kind of gave me confidence for yeah. like the next matches or whatever. Like I was beating people in the top 20 and I was like playing really well. I was co- overcoming like a bit of adversity like here and there and like, you know, just kind of like stepping stones to like playing better and better and better and kind of just getting that like rhythm and that confidence back. And then obviously once I got to the US Open, I was like, okay, like I was playing tough matches, but I was still in the matches. I was like beating these people. So I was like, okay, I might as well be able to, you know, take it a little further. Um, okay, you beat Venus mm-hmm. and now you're in the final. And are you favored to win? Do you feel? Or is it? Um, I don't think so. Or it's even? So. Or she just came like back the... from injury. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when she's beating everybody, she said that she's giving yeah, you a cheer. Like... Every day healthy is a blessing, bro. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't think I was favored to win. I think it was more like Maddie was also injured mm-hmm. during the year. So we were both injured at the same time, like at home texting each other, like, what are you doing? What's happening? Like, whatever. You like, play the US <laughs> 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 So, like, we didn't have, like, we both, yeah, we both were injured. So, there was nothing, like, there was no expectation. So for you both, it's just all upside. Uh, yeah. That much. It was on the up and up. Um, okay, so the the money is there in your mind when you're playing the match, or what is... Oh, no. I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just, like... It's just, like, funny that, to see it on the TV. And yeah, then, like, I was, like, oh, my God. And then, like, I was, like, in my room, like, watching replays of myself, like, mm-hmm. on Sports Center. So how do you keep such a big situation low pressure? It's, it sounds like to, to me it's like oh yeah we play the finals of the US Open <laughs> tomorrow and it's like I mean, it's okay it whichever way like, it goes no it's totally like that I yeah. think like if you have a mom like mine like yeah. Jesus Christ like I think you the moments that are like supposed to be very serious are totally not serious okay. like she was just like oh it's gonna be so fun like my friends are coming <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like okay whatever like yeah. my friends my brother my sister my aunt and uncle, like you know like the whole thing was yeah. very like fluid and exciting and fun and i think growing up how i grew up with my mom just being like oh like it's a good time like tennis is fun yay like rah rah like everything was always like a good experience and i think being in like very high pressure situations it was always like it's gonna be great like it's gonna be so fun my mom's like like you know what i mean like if you know my mom she everything that she does and says she's like it's gonna be amazing like i love it like i mean you saw my mom like she's just like this is so fun like that was funny because before my first finals of the future, I could barely eat dinner the night before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing for 10, 15 points. Like, <laughs> this is a big deal for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> so when I call my dad in Cancun, <laughs> trying to eat an extra spoonful of rice. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, funny. it is like that, though. Like, you get super nervous. I get very nervous. I can't eat either. And, like, I'm just like, I totally feel you on that. But I definitely think. It's like the way how whatever sport you play, like how it's like presented to you is how you probably always will like remember it or like like the feeling that you get from it. And I think from growing up until like even now, like it was always like, okay, if we win, we're going to sushi. Like, you know, like it was always like an exciting, like fun, rewarding thing for me. And I think I obviously would raise my kids like that because like it makes your kid or whoever like excited about whatever it is that they're doing um and i think as i got older and like had better results and whatever like i mean the us open was great i won the us open right i was in the french open final and i didn't win and it was like absolutely devastating french open was like the only tournament that like i've ever wanted to win like Mm -hmm. like i have to win the french open i just have to i don't know like i've always done so well there i've made it's been my best slam i've made fourth round uh or the second week of the french open for the last 12 years or something, 10 years, something like that. So, like, it's been my best slam with most matches, and, like, I just always wanted to win there. And when I didn't, it was, like, heartbreaking. I swear I cried for, like, a week. It was, like, devastating. But after, I was like, okay, it just wasn't my time. Like, it wasn't meant for me to win the French Open. It wasn't meant for me to, like, have that moment. And, like, I think that's, like, I'm, I'm able to accept that, like, that just was like that was Simona's time it was her time to like win a grand slam like whatever it may be like it just was that wasn't meant for me like maybe god will reward me with something else and more greater and more whatever but like that just like everyone has their moment that was her moment and i was like okay that's it it's funny because like talking about the majority of professional tennis players especially i'm assuming at the top of the game they're pretty clear internal goals like they want to be this in the world they want to win this tournament blah 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 Mm -hmm. 
but for you, like winning the U.S. Open, I'm sure as a, an American, it must have been special, but it's not, it wasn't like life or death that you win the U.S. Open or you don't in your career. So like, do you wake up after winning the U.S. Open? Is there a letdown now that you've achieved somewhat of a goal? Because I, know, I, I could assume that for other people, if it's a huge goal of theirs, they win it and maybe it could be like, what now, you know? Yeah. So how was it for you? Did you have any... Anything was different besides your bank account on yeah. <laughs> waking up the next day? Um, yeah, it was different. I was, like, totally lost and confused. I was like, what happens now? Like, what do we, like, where do we go from here? I also was very injured after the U.S. Open, too. And I, like, tried to play for another six months, and it was, like, a disaster. But I think after, I was like, okay, well, like, I won that. And then, obviously, I continued to have good results, like... I made, I won Miami Open right after, not right after. I actually lost like 10 matches in a row, but. <laughs> we can skip over that. <laughs> <laughs> I was injured. I just remember being injured and I like couldn't do anything. I couldn't walk. I couldn't like, it was terrible. And I was still playing because I didn't want to get any fines. So I was like, let me just continue to play. And then I think I lost like eight matches in a row or 10. It was eight or 10 matches in a row. And then I won Miami Open, which was the last year that it was at Key Biscayne, which was really cool. And then I made the French Open final, had a complete mental breakdown over the summer, like on the clay when I was like supposed to be playing well. And like, mm-hmm. it was a disaster. Um, and then made the French Open final, did okay at US Open, like courted again after like defending the points, obviously from w- winning the previous year. Then I made the year in final that year. So like, I, I still had purpose and like, it, like I still was playing well. But I just was, like, tired. And I was like, what am I playing for? Like, why am I out here? Like, I did what I was supposed to do type of thing. Like, I won the Grand Slam. Like, yay, rah, rah. And I was like, what happens now? Right? Like, what do I, like, what am I playing for? Like, what is the purpose? And, yeah, like, that was hard. In that moment, did did you kind of try to remember why you started playing in the beginning? Like, how, like, what you said, like, how you and your mom approach matches? Like, is that kind of why you've been playing... Like, obviously, now you're trying, I'm assuming, to get back to, to as high as you can get. So, yeah. like, is that what you think about now when you're playing or what's on your mind or going you into some of like a, a different purpose or something? Um, Yeah, I think my purpose now is, like, just my vision of tennis is, like, a little bit different. Like, yes, I would love to be back in the top 20. And, like, I was telling my coach the other day, I was like, you know, my ranking hasn't moved in, like, a year i'm like who how, who are who are these people playing these matches like where are they getting these points from like what's happening i'm like do i not play enough like do i need to travel some more like what do i need to do like i think that what do you say back <laughs> he was like shit i don't know you having a good time on here too <laughs> sushi um, yeah right he's like this is fun i mean um no i think it's just like it's very different when you are like figuring it out. Like, and I'm like, is the only thing that I really want to do, like make my ranking better. Like, then what's that going to do for like, is that going to like yeah. change anything? Is that going to like make me happier? Like, I think a lot of tennis players, like tennis, like completely defines your life and like who you are. Like when you're winning, like you feel good about yourself when you're losing, you're like, I'm a piece of shit type of thing. Like, it's like, you feel so bad about yourself, like based on like literally what your ranking is. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the clip. The full episode will be in the description down below. Go check it out for a full episode with Sloan Stevens. Hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos on our channel. Thanks for watching.